In this video, I'm going to show you how to get Atari 2600 emulation up and running on the Wii U version of RetroArch. The Atari 2600 is the first system that I ever played growing up. My parents owned one, and we just grew up playing games like Pac-Man, Missile Command, Combat, and a variety of those really crummy sports titles. I still enjoy going back and playing Atari 2600 quite frequently, but because it's hard for me to hook up my actual system, I rely heavily on emulation to do so. And thanks to emulators like RetroArch, we could do it on a wide variety of devices, including the Nintendo Wii U, and I'm going to show you how to get that set up today. To get started with Atari 2600 emulation, we need to acquire Atari 2600 games. This can be done using a hardware dumper if you have a big physical collection of Atari 2600 games. I believe some of the Atari 2600 compilations also have ROMs that you could dump from them. Or, you know, you could just resort to the shady parts of the net. Regardless of how you source your Atari 2600 games, we need to add them to our Wii U SD card. So on my Wii U SD card, I made a folder named RetroArch ROMs, and that's where I'm just putting everything that I use in this tutorial series. So I'm going to open that up and put my Atari 2600 games inside. But once you have your game source and placed on your SD card, you can go ahead and close out of everything and take the SD card out of your computer, put it into your Wii U, and get it booted up. Now, just as a quick reminder, this guide is a continuation of my original RetroArch install video, so please refer back to that video for initial install setup, settings, and if you want a RetroArch forwarder channel, I go over that as well. But now that we got that out of the way, let's go ahead and boot into RetroArch using either the Homebrew Launcher or a RetroArch forwarder channel. After RetroArch is loaded, we can begin loading up Atari 2600 games, and to do so, you go down to Load Core, scroll down to Atari, and you can load up the Stella 2014 Core by pressing A. And once the Core is finished loading, you can go down to Load Content, SD Card, and then find your RetroArch games, your Atari 2600 games rather, so I put mine in a folder named RetroArch ROMs, Atari 2600 games, and then I have them all right here. So from here, I could just press A on one, and it will load up, and I can begin playing. But I think this method is very slow and unintuitive, so what I like to do instead is make a game's playlist, and I could do this by going over to the left side of the menu, and go down to Import Content. And then from here, I'll go back over to the right, go down to Manual Scan. Now for the Content Directory, choose your Atari 2600 game folder. So again, for me, SD Card. RetroArch ROMs, Atari 2600 games, scan this directory. And then for system name, we're going to choose Atari 2600. And default core, Atari 2600, Stella 2014. Now from here, make sure scan recursively is on if you have your game separated into subfolders. And if they are zipped, make sure scan inside archives is on. And once you have the options set the way you need them, we can start the scan. And after the scan is complete, there will be a new Atari 2600 playlist entry down on the bottom left. And from here, we can begin loading up Atari 2600 games. So we could just go to a game, press A on it, and press A again to run. And there we go, Atari 2600 games up and running on a Nintendo Wii U. This is so much fun. So for those of you looking to get Atari 2600 games up and running on your Nintendo Wii U, that's really the whole process. Just source your games, put them on the SD card, and load them up. There aren't even any advanced core options for the Stella 2014 core, so this one is exceptionally easy compared to some others. Now, typically in this part of the video, I would go over shaders, but the Wii U version of RetroArch has some interesting quirks when it comes to shaders, so I'm planning on making a dedicated Wii U shader video after we finish up the core videos, so stay tuned for that. But that's really going to do it for this one. Again, this one is pretty simple and straightforward. But as always, if you happen to have any questions, feel free to ask me down in the comment section below, and I will do my best to try to help you out. But now if you could all do me a huge favor and be sure to hit that like or dislike button just depending on how much you like today's tutorial, short as it may be. And if you haven't already, be sure to hit that sub button so you can see when new videos just like this go live. It seriously goes a long way to helping out the channel and I am most grateful to all of you for that. 
If you're feeling particularly generous and want to help keep the channel running, you can always hit that join button here on YouTube or check out the Patreon link in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. A little really goes a long way and I just, and I can't thank everyone who has already done so enough. Like, thank you so much to my champions. But that's going to do it for this one. So until next time, my wonderful internet peeps, stay awesome and we will see you all back next video.